1954, okay? Okay. And it took place at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Um, okay. He, and I'm just going to tell you what he shared with us. He was supervising the installation of a, a landing facility for F-86 fighter jets. And the whole thing was to be documented on uh, camera. And his camera crew um, suddenly saw a disc-shaped craft fly into view, broad daylight, and land on the dry lake bed. The cameras obviously were turned from the F-86 landing facility to mm -hmm. this double lenticular shaped, I'm just describing it as he did, shaped object, and I think it said it had three landing gear. I believe he said three. And it landed on the dry lake bed. And remember, this is in the 50s, okay? So they filmed this thing, and I think it's on the ground for a few seconds, and then it lifts back up again, the landing gear tuck into the belly of the, of the saucer, and then it shoots off at a high rate of speed and it's gone. So they have the film footage developed, and Gordon Cooper... Uh, said that the film footage was uh, successfully developed and that he held it. He didn't put it through a machine, but he held it up to the light and he saw that it was, you know, it was in clear, in focus, flying saucer, broad daylight on the on the tarmac. And they, he calls the his, um, you know, commanding officers, and I guess he went up through the ranks to finally, you know, they're telling him in Washington, in Washington D.C., put the film on a courier jet and send it to Washington, and he did. And the film was never seen or heard from him ever again. And when so, I said to him on camera, I was like, well, did you follow up? Did you find out what happened to the footage? He snapped at me. And you could tell that he was harboring this resentment for over 50 yeah. years. Um, you could feel it. Oh, my God. Absolutely. You could see, you could see it in the, because, you know, he handed over evidence of what he believes was not of this world. And he said that... The reason why he believed that is because of the nature of the propulsion. And B, he said he was working on super top secret aircraft. He was working on the on the um, that. Uh, so sorry, I'm trying to think of the the spy plane at the time. Um, yeah, SR seven one or something no, like that. No, no, it was the one that was shot down by it shot down over Russia by uh, Gary Powers was a, the A two or something or the U two the U two the U two duh yeah. So he was involved with the very secret, super secret aircraft program, uh -huh. and he was like, look, man, we just simply didn't have that technology back then. So Gordon Cooper talked also about uh, flying over Germany in, in fighter jets um, in an official capacity um, for the military, and that they were tracked, they were, they were flying in formation, and that there were a series of uh, disc-shaped objects that were tracking them, flying alongside of them, and that every now and again, these discs would do a lateral move. They'd shoot out rapidly to the left or to the right. But he said it was just impossible by anything conventional. And um, so anyway, so he shared these stories with us. And, and, and my father. And you're sitting there. Over. You're sitting there in the living room, hearing this with your father. And what must have been? What was that like? I mean, you're really you know, hearing this from Gordon an astronaut, Cooper. and your father as well. Yeah. Gordon Cooper was very matter-of-fact about it. He wasn't there trying to sell crazy. He was like, look, I don't care whether you believe me or not. This is what happened. You yeah. know? And uh, he's like, I'm not out there trying to peddle this stuff. I'm not trying to sell my story. I'll just tell you this is what happened. And uh, you can do, with, with, do it with it with what you like. Mm -hmm. And my father was rocked pretty hard, you know, <laughs> because he's like, why on earth? With this guy, with everything to lose and nothing to gain, not getting paid a dime, not out there trying to sell his story, why would he do that? And my father absolutely, <laughs> believed, my father absolutely believed him. And, and my, father, my father had nothing but, but, but support and respect for my work ever since. Wow. Wow. A great story. And that's really, uh, in my opinion, what keeps this moving, right, uh, moving forward. And I'm talking about this interest in UFOs. Every time I think, ah, geez, just forget it. <laughs> you know, like it's, I can't get to the truth and it's, maybe it's not that important anyway. And then someone really important comes out and says, no, no, it's, it's real. Uh, I was an astronaut in the case of Gordon Cooper and 
this is what I know. And then you're back in the game. You just can't ignore it. Uh, who are some of the other heavy hitters? Who would you say, if you have a top 10 list or a top five or whatever, who, what are the testimonies that you feel rock, rock, rock of the world? You know, this, like this testimony well, I, of Ward Cooper rocked your father. You had certain uh, things that influenced your um, opinion on UFOs, and, and I had mine. Like, one of the figures for me that certainly triggered my interest was Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Because I remember thinking, like, MIT grad, six man to walk on the moon, extremely articulate, well-read, founder of the Noetic Institute. Like, why on earth would this guy come forward and talk about UFOs if there was nothing to it? I just don't believe that someone of his stature would be stupid enough to, to, to talk publicly about something that's very damaging potentially to his uh, reputation if sure. there wasn't anything to it. You see what I'm saying? And that's, one of, the big, that's one of the big myths. And I remember you know, just being very, very um, moved by his, his position on it. And, um, and, you know, I'm one of the first people out there to say that, you know, a very large percentage of UFO-related material is absolute rubbish. And uh, I'd be the first one to say that. But i will tell you if, you, if you, if you go in with a laser-like like focus and you just try and concentrate on the, on the FAA officials or the pilots or the radar operators or the, the very credible cases and witnesses uh, you're going to find yourself truly baffled. I mean, you're going to find yourself in a position where you go, look, either these guys are full of doggy duty, which I highly doubt, mm -hmm. or we're being tested. <clears throat> and the latter is probably the most likely scenario that you're going to walk away with. And uh, and those are the cases, those are the witnesses that, I, that I've tried to hunt down. And I say hunt down because it's, some of them have taken me years to get access to. I mean... Mm -hmm. It's not like these people are just waving a flag going, come talk to me. I mean, I, I, I honestly say, like, you know, my interview with Lord Hill Norton, that took years to get. And when I got there, I had to be interrogated in his office just to be able to put him on camera for, like, eight minutes. Uh, amazing, amazing uh, that you actually got in there. And the things you have to endure just to get to these people, never mind the actual interview, but you have to get there. And that's oh weeks, months, I mean, well, you years know, that, That's a... That's another reason why I did a second round of Out of the Blue. I don't know if you, if you realize that or not, but there are two versions of the film Out of the Blue. Yeah, I sure do. Version. I've been following your work. Yep. So there's a, there was a version that was released in 2003, uh -huh. and uh, there was another version that was released in 2006. Actually, it wasn't officially released, and that's a story in itself, which I, again, don't want to necessarily go into. But, but let's talk about credible witnesses. I would say John Callahan. John Callahan, for those who, yes, please tell the uh, listeners out there who John Callahan is, for those who don't John, know. John Callahan uh, was part of the FAA investigation for uh, a very famous case that happened. I believe it was Anchorage, Alaska, 1986. And That's it was right. a Japanese flight with Kenju Tarachi and another uh, co-pilot. And they uh, radioed to the tower below about uh, a UFO encounter, and um, the long story short, it was it was a it was a it was a visual contact with an object that was four times the size of a 747. And remember, a 747 has an elevator, and it was also tracked on radar. Okay, and they had the voice cockpit report. So, so John Callahan was a part of that investigation, and he kept the flight path data the radar videotaped data. So you know, you don't just have a printout, you have the actual video of the radar confirmation mm -hmm. of the object. You have the cockpit recordings. You have the transmissions between the military base that also confirm the UFO on the radar. <clears throat> and you had all these, the flight path of the UFO, the flight path of the 747, all this incredible evidence. And John Callahan of the FAA kept it all. Quietly. Uh, uh, that's right. I think he put it in his desk, something like that, oh. somewhere in his office, and he kind of hung on to it for a while. 
yet. Oh, he until definitely. Uh, yes, yes, he did. Uh, but there was a part of the story. And by the way, let's make it clear that John Callan of the FAA, he's not just some guy in the FAA. He was division chief of accidents and investigations division. So we're talking about a chief of a division here. He's a pretty heavy hitter. And when he Forced tells to be reckoned this, with. Yes, for, the, man, the man is. I feel I stand a couple feet away from him when he's talking to me because he just, uh, he, you know, if that guy, if you were to ever upset the man, I just feel like he, he is a force to be reckoned with. But, uh, yeah, he says, I, uh, I'll let you tell the story because you have a lot of time well, with him. He says that the CIA let, let just, came let, to him some, to get the evidence. Please go on. Yes. Well, there's something that a lot of people don't know about, and that is, um, he went to the National Press Club that Stephen Greer did back in 2001. Mm-hmm. And when I tried to get him, because I think I, I, I consider his, him, just his testimony alone to be extremely compelling. Yes. But keep in mind that his testimony is coupled with scientific data, like hard evidence, okay? Sure, like sure. Like radar confirmation and reports and and the cockpit recordings mm-hmm. crying out loud. Sure. You got the pilot going, I'm looking to Betty, Betty Big, you know, like huge. Yes. <laughs> you know, and then like and then you got the the military tower down below going, Yeah, we got we're picking the thing up and it's doing this, it's doing that. Sure. I mean it's phenomenal. So anyway yeah. so that, I mean, Callahan to have more of a UFO incident than that. When you're talking about a UFO incident, that is a perfect example of what a UFO incident is. Correct? Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you got Callahan's side of the story, which is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal, okay? Callahan says to me, Fox, he says, the only way I'm going to come to your event in the National Press Club is if you get the pilot. I said, Mr. Callahan, really? That's a tall order. He said, get that pilot, and I'll come. (laughs) Oh, damn. I was like, oh, my God. So I hire a private investigator to find the pilot, Okay. They find the pilot in a town outside in Japan, and I get the two telephone numbers. <laughs> the investigator charged me thousands of dollars. I can't remember how much it was, thousands of dollars. But he gets the phone, like he gets the address and the telephone number. Mm-hmm. So I learn a little Japanese enough to say, you know, hello, my name is James Fox. I'm calling for Kenji Tarachi. So I call the number, and this woman picks up, mm-hmm. and I do my little spiel. I think okay. I might have said Konichiwa, you know, blah, 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 James Fox. I can't remember exactly. Oh, I had it written down. And the woman said, he no talk about an incident. And then <laughs> goes to hang the phone up. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute, please, no. Like, this, please, like, please. I just spent $4,000 to find you. <laughs> please don't hang up. <laughs> like, please. <laughs> I swear to you. And hangs up. Ah. Oh. So like, call back again and I think I had maybe 10 more seconds with her and then she never picked up my phone call ever again and that was the end. Uh, he no talk about an incident. That's exactly what she said. Wow. Wow. Now, the... Well, now, uh, there's, there's, I just want to say, oh, please, maybe you're going into it, but I believe that he was laid off after that incident, right? He like, was didn't laid he, off and then they, they filed a lawsuit against it because... Look, you know, you know, like well, you can't lay this guy off for just telling the truth. Yeah. So they there was a so somehow he got his job back, but as part of the provision, I guess he couldn't talk about the incident. Now I don't sure. know if he's retired now. He might be retired by now. I don't know. But sure. I inter- I tried to get an interview with him in 2007. I think it would be very interesting to get more testimony from the guy today. But the Japanese airlines were absolutely emphatic, and people think you know it might not necessarily be this big conspiracy where. You know, the government's clamping down on them as much as it could be that, too, obviously. But as much as it could be Japanese Airlines doesn't want to be associated with pilots who see UFOs. It's not good for business. Sure. It's called the curtain of ridicule or people just not wanting to touch the UFO topic or be associated with it at all. Well, you know, let me let me tell you, you know, I don't know if your listeners, listeners are aware of this or not, but there was, uh, you know, the, the sighting that happened over the Capitol building in 1952. And I think it was July. And, you know, it was pretty damn intense. I mean, there were jets scrambled, and they tried to sure. intercept these things, and there, there, there was uh, radar confirmation and visual confirmation. And 
Uh, I believe there was a photograph or two taken, but I'm not positive on that one. I think there was. That was a huge event. And by the way, I just want to drop that UFO hunters did want to investigate that event and do a whole episode on it. And get this, uh, History Channel said it's just it's just not interesting enough. It's just not fresh enough. So interesting. I, it always bugs me, the, the rationale behind how they pick their their episodes. But this is a huge, a huge event, 1952. So, yeah, please, yeah. Uh, please go so, on. So, anyway, um, there was this panel called the Robertson Panel Convened of a very prominent scientist to deal with this problem by the Air Force. And Dr. Jalen Hynek was part of the Robertson Panel. Mm-hmm. And that is where they decided to adopt this policy of ridicule. Like, we can't deny it outright, but we can make fun of those people who claim to have seen them. And it was a very, very effective campaign because if you think about it, what's funny about someone seeing something that's inexplicable in the sky? I don't, I don't think it's funny. I mean, if a radar operator or a pilot sees something they can't explain, what's funny about that? But UFO, flying saucer, is synonymous with laughter. Mm-hmm. And that was developed in 1953 by the Robertson panel. And it was, a, it was a campaign that stuck to this day. And it was a very effective campaign. Uh, but the campaign wears thin, the more these, um, credible people step forward, the more Gordon Coopers and Edgar Mitchells and John Callahan's that come out and begin saying, no, 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 this is, this is real. And we have the evidence that it's real. Then, uh, people stop laughing. The laughter is kind of dying down a bit. Would you say that overall around the world or in the United States regarding the top of topic of UFOs? Are attitudes changing? Is the laughter dying down a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I, I was on, I did a Larry King show. He's got a new show out called Larry King Now. It's it's on Aura TV, and who's a very wealthy uh, Mexican investor <laughs> that's, a, I think he's a billionaire. He started the whole thing. And I was on his show, God, a couple months ago. And, uh, you know, you're pretty Larry's tight with like, Larry. You're, you're pretty tight with Larry. He loves you. Yeah. You're on there like... I've been on the show like, like nine times. Can you believe that? <laughs> I, no, I believe it. Well, he's... he's. People have asked me, what's the deal with Larry King? And he's genuinely interested in UFOs. He really wants to know. I made his show once. I was on the show once. He invited me on. And it was to talk about UFO hunters. And off camera, he asked me, so, you know, Pat, you know, what do you think? You know, tell me, tell, what did you see? And he, he, you know, it's a genuine interest for him. He really likes to know what's going on with UFOs. His wife's brother is in a band. Okay. They were on tour in a bus. And they had a very up-close personal UFO encounter with a flying saucer that was hovering right above the telephone poles. And what? His wife's yeah, yeah. brother? His wife's brother, yes. Oh, father, you well, said. Okay. Out, the last time I was on his show, you know, he was kind of waffling a little bit. He was cool, but he was waffling a little bit. His wife was right there, and she goes, Honey, what are you talking about? My brother saw you flying saucer. And he's like, Yes, yes, your brother's story is very compelling. Like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Larry, Larry believes. I think that he's, he wants to see some more hard evidence, but he, but he believes. He believes. Uh, obviously so. You've been on the show. Uh, around ten times, you say. You know, and I think I think it rates well. I mean, they they kind of rushed this last one, but every time they did a UFO show on on CNN, they did really well. And you know that's good. And there was one show that we did. It was the best Larry King show I've done. And let me okay. tell you, it was November of. 2007, and I would love to give you an exact date. I think it was the 4th. Okay. But it could have been the 3rd or it could have been the 5th, but I think it was the 4th. November 4th, 2007. We did a Larry King show, and they allowed me, CNN, they had a budget, too. Woof! God, did they have a budget. They allowed me to pick all the entire cast for the show. Uh Aha! My selection. Fantastic. My selection. I chose Nick Pope. I chose John Callahan. These people were in different locations, okay? Some of them were in Europe. But I picked Nick Pope. They got a truck to him. They got a satellite truck to Nick Pope. He was in, like, Amsterdam or somewhere in Holland. I picked picked, uh, Jim 
Peniston. I sure. picked. Uh, did you I have uh, Colonel uh, Holt? Did you have Holt on there I also? Cur- I had I, I had Colonel Holt. Yeah. I had Governor Fife Symington. I had John yeah. Callahan out of uh, back east somewhere. Um, and that was the first at least half an hour, okay? We Huge did not show. even have it the bunker on the show, I promise you. It was a disclosure. <laughs> he wouldn't but have he, made it. <laughs> he wouldn't have lasted. But a, the last a the last the last part of the show we brought in this guy James McGaha, I believe it was James <laughs> McGaha. But right, he was right. totally outnumbered. And he yeah. was outnumbered by very credible witnesses. Sure. And and uh, you know, so we had get, we had the governor Simonton. We had you know we had all these incredible incredible people, and it was just days before we did the national press club event, and and, uh, and it was amazing. We had one hour of promotion on CNN with Larry King's support mm-hmm. for the national press club event. It was mm-hmm. it was unprecedented. Well, this yeah, it, it was that was a huge show, and this is what I'm talking about: the laughter kind of dying down. This wouldn't have happened. 20 years ago or 30 years ago without people ridiculing it or making fun of it. But it, it seemed like this topic of very uh, – this this movement of very serious people discussing the reality of UFOs is really uh, come to prime time, literally. Uh, literally, Larry King, people talking about UFOs on prime time in very serious uh, – in a very serious way. Would you say that disclosure has – in this way, it kind of occurred, actually. People are wondering, when is disclosure going to occur? But I think it, it kind of is. You know, when you have people of well, Charles Holt yeah. uh, is talking on TV about it, it's kind of there out there. Inc- there was an incredible time. You know, 2006, 2007, 2008 was really a, a beautiful period in ufology, I think. You know, we had, <laughs> um, we, we had, we had the uh, release of all these French documents by... CNES, CNES, Centre National d'Etudes Spatiales, if I might show off my French a little bit, but it's basically uh-huh. the French equivalent of NASA. Sure. And, you know, hundreds and hundreds of documents from, I think, the 50s all the way up. Then we had uh, England following suit. Uh, we had, I mean, this was unbelievable at the time, I felt. I mean, of course, we had the, the uh, O'Hare incident. I think that was 2006. That was phenomenal. Punched a hole in the cloud as it left, hovered over Terminal 17. Like, you know, witnessed by all these United Airlines people. Um, yeah. That was a big deal. You know, the Chicago Tribune, I think, did a, did a piece on that. It was one of the most popular pieces ever. Um, you know, then we had uh, Governor Simonton coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the National Press Club event. You know, Leslie Kane and I working together. It was, it was truly uh, a, a, an amazing time. And I remember walking the streets of London with... Nick Pope, who investigated UFOs in an official capacity with the Ministry of Defense in England. Mm-hmm. And I said, gosh, Nick, you know, when is disclosure going to happen? Is disclosure going to happen? And his response, which I thought was very interesting, he said, well, don't think of it as disclosure with a capital D. Think of it as disclosure with a small d. In other words, uh-huh. it's happening slowly. It's not going to be one big event. It's going to be a trickle. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's happening. I, I think it is happening now. I, I agree because of the types of people like Callahan, Nick Pope, uh, Five Symington coming forward. But still, we are missing that thing, that one big, <laughs> whatever, tangible object or picture of something that would really turn it around. Uh, we cannot seem to come up with you know what I mean? Something tangible or yep. really a piece of, you know, uh, alien bone or something. Uh, what do you, do you have any predictions for that in the future? You have any leads on that? What's it going to take to, to make? Well, let's put it this way. Um, there probably isn't, uh, anyone out there possibly listening tonight, but I'll say it anyway. Um, it's, uh, hmm. if anyone has, uh, $20,000 handy <laughs> and wants to come, I'm dead serious, and wants to come with me to view some evidence, um, then to please get a hold of me through my website. I know what I saw. Just Google I know what I saw. You'll get to my website. I know what I saw on the movie.com. There's a uh, story that I've been pursuing for roughly a year, and the guy is sitting on official evidence. 
and he said for 20 grand if it's not everything he we 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 put the money in an escrow account we view it if it's not everything we he claims it is then um, you get a you know, we walk away with our money we keep our money and if it is and he gets it and blah, 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 end of story <clears throat> wow wow so we'll see i mean you know i went I'm, i went and met with the gentleman at his home we spent a week together uh he's a very very credible person there's no question in my mind that he's in possession of the evidence but uh you know it's just a matter of negotiating a proper deal and doing it in a way that uh doesn't scare him off and doesn't uh publicize the case too much until we've we've definitely identified secured and um you know got the uh evidence in a safe location so yeah that's 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 kind of what's happening right now it's part of a bigger project that I'm working on well, it's you know to all of us listening in, we're getting kind of an inside view of the life of a, of a real life uh, hu- truth hunter. I don't want to say UFO hunter because you're about more than than UFOs. I know you're working on other documentaries. I think one was on the uh, uh, oil spill, the Gulf uh, oil spill, and, and and other things. So, but we're getting a glimpse into your life of what it takes to really get close. To this phenomenon and, and, and the truth, and it's a lot of work. I mean, you're hiring private investigators to go to Japan. You know, you have to kind of wine and dine some pretty, uh, you know, uh, people around the world to uh, to hear their story. Or fly people, but you know, satellite trucks to London to have Nick Pope talk uh, to uh, Larry King. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. Um, you know. Uh, it, you know, are you are you tired? <laughs> are you exhausted? Do you have energy to go on? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these people, unfortunately, that uh, once you know they you stick your teeth into something, you don't want to let go, you know. And and they say like you know what you love will end up killing you, I guess. <laughs> but my feeling is that uh, I think it's important enough, and I think that it 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 merits. Um, you know, people like myself, and there's so many people out there that are doing so much more than I, what I'm doing. I mean, the only benefit to to what I do is I, I get people on camera, and I think that's um, that's valuable, you know. Well, that's but also big... also you know I'm 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 because I've got so many weaknesses in so many areas, but one of the one of the, the things that I'm good at is getting people to say things on camera that they normally wouldn't say. <laughs> mm-hmm. They say that I've got a very disarming uh, effect, but what, I don't know what the hell it is. But um, I think it's worth I think it's worth pursuing. I think it's uh, it's something that uh, that people have a right to know, and um, and I think that it would have possibly a very unifying effect, humbling effect on all of us, you know. And I think that. Um, um, I think it's uh, I think it's well 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 over overdue. Well, you have uh, you have a gift, my friend. You are putting it to good use and doing something that uh, a lot of people think is very important. And if if you can do it in your lifetime, you will change. You will change the course of humanity. You know, it'll be it's like Isaac Newton discovering gravity or any of the major discoveries that have changed. Uh, humanity, basically. If we ever confirm that we are not alone, it will have a huge impact on our civilization for sure. James, we're running out of time, and you have a huge party of ufologists and UFO heavy hitters to get to. I don't want to keep you from that. Um, uh, Before we end the show, is there anything you'd like to throw out there? Anything you'd like to promote? Are you working on a book, or where can people get more James Fox? Well, um, you know, people. Uh, there's a, a you know, very, very few people. For those of you that that would like to support the work or would like to see more of the work, I've got a four disc DVD set for sale on my website. If they're interested, out of the blue, the movie dot com. Oh, so sorry. Um, I know what I saw. Out of the blues up as well, but uh, I know what I saw. The movie dot com, and there's a four pack DVD set. I got the National Press Club Raw. I've got the latest version of Out of the Blue. I've got 50 years of denial, and I've got I know what I saw for 39 dollars, including tax and shipping. So it's you know decent deal. You can get everything. I don't think everything, but almost everything that you can't get out of the blue. Well, you know you can watch out of the blue on UFO TV for free, and you can I think I know what I saw is on there. I leave them up. But if you if you would like the div, the disc set, and you'd like to support what I'm doing, go for it. And if not, go watch them for free on YouTube. <laughs> 
uh, uh, very, very generous of you. And I, I hope people do, uh, those who can afford it, yeah, help. James, what you're doing is fantastic. Keep on rocking. You know, uh, I just sleep better at night knowing that you're out there uh, try, trying to help solve this thing. So I'll let you get to your <laughs> hi to Stan and Friedman and uh, whoever else is there. And I hope we can do this again sometime. I look forward. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really, I really appreciate the opportunity. And I'm sorry it took so long to, to finally arrange, but I'm really glad we did it. Uh, I'm just sorry we're out of time. There's so much more uh, that I'd like to talk about, and I'm sure others would like to hear, but we'll have to wait for another time. So uh, good night, my friend, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me on. You enjoy guys. the party. All right. Bye. Enjoy, enjoy uh, Europe. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's pretty hard. I'll, I'll try. Thanks. Send me an email. <laughs> I want to know all about it. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm uh, very good. Very good. Well, we'll talk again, I'm sure. I look forward to it. Okay. Thanks, James. Bye. All right, everybody. That was James Fox, an incredible conversation on the cutting edge of, of UFO hunting. Uh, I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions. There were a lot more, but, uh, uh, you know, well, what do you want for 90 minutes? We could talk for hours with James. Uh, this is Inception Radio Network and Epic Voyagers Radio. Uh, I'm Pat Uskert. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening, morning, wherever you are. Good night. Thank you for being with us tonight. Please join us again next Monday evening for Extraordinary Phenomena Investigations Council's Epic Voyages. I'm Roger Peacock for Epic. Until next time. <laughs>